Welcome to the program today. My name is Christine Sneeringer, and I am very excited to present to you David Kyle Foster and his amazing story of overcoming sexual brokenness. David, you're an author and a speaker, and you lead a national ministry, an international ministry, in fact. And it's just, I'm thrilled to have you here on the show today. Well, it's great to be here. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity to get this message out that God wants to heal sexually broken people. And it doesn't matter to him how broken a person is, how perverse their life has been. He wants to heal them and redeem them and take them with him into his kingdom. Amen to that, brother. And I am so excited because your story is one of incredible extremes. You were a prostitute of all things. Yes, I ended up a prostitute for seven years during my years in Hollywood. and. By then, I thought God could not possibly love me uh, because I didn't think God loved prostitutes. I could only imagine. You went from prostitute to priest. In fact, we're going to show a clip right now from the 700 Club that's going to tell that story, and we're going to come back and let you tell more details. Okay. I remember days when I would be on the set starring in a movie with NBC executives from New York all around me telling me I was great and wonderful in the next James Dean, and then going out that night and prostituting. I was professional actor by day, male prostitute by night. By day, David Foster was a rising star who basked in the bright lights of Hollywood. But by night, he lurked in the shadows of a dangerous underworld, gripped by an addiction he couldn't control. Both seemed unlikely places for the son of a Presbyterian minister. As a young boy, David loved the movies. It was there his dream to act was born. It put into me a desire to become an actor that I wasn't even aware of. One of the things I'd do is I'd go to the movies and I'd sit there all day long because um, it was a fantasy world. It was a world where things were okay. Everything was okay. There was always a happy ending. People loved each other. Unlike David's home, where he says he felt rejected by the most influential man in his life. I didn't have my dad be emotionally close to me like I longed for. And, and he didn't know that he needed to be doing that because his dad had never taught him how to do that. But, you know, I took that as a sign that he didn't love me. And needing a dad's love and affection and approval and modeling. And all of that uh, caused me to look for it elsewhere. And I remember early on uh, looking at other fellows in, in uh, junior high school and high school. Not to lust after them. There was nothing sexual about it. I was just looking for what it was in them that made them so happy and well-liked and popular. And um, I was looking for what was missing in me, in them. But David's fascination with men created inner turmoil. He spent his teenage years lonely and depressed, alienated from his father and from God. My dad, being a pastor and being Scottish, and uh, actually contributed to my um, disfavor of God. I, I associated my father with God. In college, heavy drug use freed him to act out his homosexual inclinations. And that led to such self-disgust, David wanted to end his life. I tried to take my life immediately after having that experience and God did not allow it to happen again. It wasn't the first time David had attempted suicide. He had heard voices telling him to kill himself all of his life. But in every suicide attempt that failed, David saw the hand of God. He told me in each case that he loved me by saving my life. And that got me interested in God again. That, that gave me a spark of hope. I would always go in, out into nature to find God. And I went to the pier in St. Petersburg one night to talk to him. And it turned out to be the place where male prostitutes hung out, which I did not know. David not only discovered this was where prostitutes hung out, he was accidentally mistaken as one. It just totally surprised me. And it made me mad because I'd gone there to talk to God, and here I am in the midst of male prostitutes and people thinking I'm one. David prostituted himself that night for the first time, and he vowed it would be the last. Instead, it just caused a craving for more. For a kid who's always wanted an older man to hold them and to tell them they were wonderful and that they were okay, 
It was instantly addicting to me. After college, David concealed his life as a prostitute and went to Hollywood to pursue his dream to act. Unlike most aspiring actors, David's career quickly blossomed. In fact, the first part I ever read for, I got, and it was the starring role in a, in a movie. So I had one of those experiences you only read about. I ended up with the best agents in town, a string of national commercials, um, another starring role, uh, several feature roles, and being written up in the magazines about, and, and yet I would continue to be a male prostitute on the side. So I was like trying to destroy whatever success I was seeking. There was so much self-hatred in me. After several years in Hollywood, David's double life took its toll. He longed for spiritual fulfillment, so he searched to find God. Unfortunately, he was misled by a friend into a cult. But during this time, something very interesting happened in David's parents' life. In the meantime, my parents had gotten born again. My dad, my cold, severe dad, Scottish dad, had gotten born again at a charismatic convention of Presbyterians. So I started getting into my head that I had to go to Israel to find Jesus, because I was starting to doubt some of the things the guru was saying. David went to Israel and discovered things about Christ he never realized, especially Christ's love for him. I'm walking down the Mount of Olives, the last day I'm in Israel, tagging along behind this Christian tour group, getting myself a free tour. And, uh, and when, the, when the pastor leading the tour group would read from the Bible things Jesus said at various points on the Mount of Olives, I heard Jesus saying them to me. I instantly knew the Bible was literally the Word of God. I went into the Garden of Gethsemane and I knelt at that rock, the very rock that Christ knelt at, and I prayed and I said, God, my guru can do miracles and you can do miracles and how am I supposed to know the difference? Who's of God and who's of Satan? And uh, he said to me, who proved his love for you? And, well, Jesus, obviously he died on the cross. <laughs> There's the answer. David dedicated his life to Christ that day, and his life dramatically changed. David went back to Los Angeles, left the cult, and found a church home. His life grew spiritually, and through prayer, David was delivered from homosexuality. But David's complete deliverance came after he paid a surprise visit to his father's church. I was so transformed in my countenance, he didn't even recognize me. And he goes, oh, oh, what has happened to you? And um, I said, you know, Dad, I'm born again. It's the first time I'd seen my dad weep. And we hugged. David and his father reconciled. Even though his father never lived to see it, David fulfilled his father's dream. He'd always wanted to have a son go to seminary. And he had four boys and none of us had seemed interested. And he finally got to have his dream fulfilled. Today, David Foster is an ordained Episcopal priest with a ministry tailored for people struggling with sexual bondage. David believes his life is a message of God's faithfulness and redemption. God says uh, the generations of the unfaithful can go on for a few generations. The generations of the righteous are for a thousand generations. No matter how perverse your life has been, you can be the first of a generation of thousands of generations of righteous if you'll just turn to God. That is the coolest story of what God has done in David's life. You know, we're going to be back with more of this interview with David Kyle Foster, Director of Mastering Life Ministries, so stay with us.